I need about six of those things. Right? No, I need about six of those things. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a long day on the field. We're going to start off with four. Then we're going to take some more later. These things really have been a game changer for us. I mean, I can't wait to go back to my regular relight. Wow. This tastes so good. I did not think it was going to work as good as it did. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for keto on the couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Three weeks! Welcome to Woo. day 21, 21 of the Beef Bacon Butter and Egg Challenge. We're 21, so we're going to be drinking today. Just kidding. So uh, I actually have seen some comments on the Facebook group. I was going through there last night. And people wanting to know what is the beef butter bacon eggs or what is BBBE Ooh, because they're new to our channel. And uh, so this is a challenge. If this is the first video you're seeing that Hi. we're doing with Dr. Barry where we basically eat nothing but beef butter bacon and eggs and some spices for we, we were doing it for 25 days. We were going to stop when we left for Las Vegas. Uh, we are going to continue this all the way through the month of October. Um, because Dr. Barry's doing with his Patreons, and we feel really good. Yeah. Uh, now, we are going to be incorporating some foods back in at the end of it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So, coffee. So, I woke up this morning, and I made some of the Maria Emmerich Protein Sparing Modified Fat Which I'm bread. so glad you did. How did you know I was craving some of that? I don't know. I just know my wife. So I decided, let me get up and add to my things to do and make that. Which, honestly, right. it's not that big of a deal. The hardest part for me is just separating the eggs. And I know, somebody's going to say, use the liquid eggs. I don't like the liquid eggs. I don't like the way that they're, you know, they pasteurize them and they just don't whip up as thick as well. And it's honestly cheaper to use regular eggs and then throw out the yolks. Yeah, especially if you're them like Aldi. So I didn't want to throw out the yolks today. So I'm like, what am I going to do with all these extra yolks? So I made some of our butter. Mm -hmm. Or not some of our butter. Some of our butter mayonnaise. So I got that in the refrigerator. I knew what you meant. Then I said, we're going to have a coffee. Now, if you're new to our channel, we add egg to our coffee. Why? Because it tastes delicious. It really turns into a cream. It sounds disgusting. It does. But you And you've got to do it in a blender. Don't just do this with a hand mixer. That will taste disgusting. Right. you got to add the yolk into with a blender. And then it just becomes this creamy goodness. And you're going to think you have cream in there. You, It does not taste eggy. I promise. Right. And it doesn't... Like if you're doing it in a blender, it doesn't turn into like an egg drop soup because some people are like isn't it cooked the egg no. and you have scrambled eggs floating in the top of your coffee no and i don't even put the blender on high i just run the blender like on a low low medium and i drop the egg in there comes out delicious so i made the coffee and i'm like well you know what we've got these egg yolks all of the nutrition for an egg is in the yolk right i mean dr barry actually said you know if you don't ever want to eat the whites don't worry about it. The yolk is actually one to one. There is protein in the yolk. Is that funny? And that's where all the vitamins and the nutrition is. And here's an interesting fact: the yolk is better eaten uncooked. Mm -mm. That's where you get all of the vitamins and nutrition. So the less you cook the yolk, the healthier it is for you. But the whites are different. The whites, you get more benefit out of the protein if you cook the whites. Well, I want them both cooked. I want them cooked well. Here, you can have some more eggs. So, Look, those ew, are perfect. No. Actually, these, I mean, this is a good way to eat it. And you eat it this way. So not like overly cooked, where it's still got that nice bright yellow cook. I am eating eggs right now that are absolutely perfect. But if I need to incorporate some lightly cooked eggs into my diet to get all the benefits of it, 
let's hide it in the coffee. The coffee well, fixed it. It also shows up in the butter mayonnaise. There you go. Because we're not cooking those yolks. So see? Okay. I don't have to not enjoy my dinner. Now with the rest of the yolks, so we had three there. I actually did three in my butter mayonnaise because I wanted to see does it make a difference. Mm -hmm. Because we we're even though we put the recipe video out there, I'm still experimenting. Like I found if you use the whole egg, every time I've done it, it takes longer to emulsify, but it doesn't get as hard in the refrigerator. So I decided I want to try that with three egg yolks. Like, does it make it more eggy tasting of a mayonnaise? Mm -hmm. And also maybe will it not get as hard in the refrigerator? That's so cool. And then, so that was six of them. And then the last six, cooked them up very lightly. Gonna go feed these to the chickens. They're so beautiful. Look at that. Look at how yellow that is. I yep. mean, there is such a difference between backyard chickens and like the eggs that we get at the store. Mm hmm so for breakfast, I still have <laughs> my eggs. Uh, we're having three eggs I ate and three eggs. Uh, just a bunch of bacon the way Rachel likes it. Pretty good. So what do you got going today? Um, what do I have going today? I have games. I have to leave here around 12 o'clock, 1230. Good thing is, is Anthony is already at the venue. So I'm hoping he's going to text me as it is going on and let me know, hey, Here's where we're, we're running behind or we're running ahead. Because a lot of times the crew ahead of us may be running behind. Like we're supposed to take the field at like two o'clock, I think, or one thirty. Yeah, but, but if, if, stuff they, if they're an hour behind, I can hang out here for a little while and get more work done. That's so good. it's nice when you know somebody who's on the morning crew who can kind of let you know what's going you on. You have an inside man. Yeah. So I got to do that. I need to pull all the comments for Keto on the Couch. I need to edit yesterday's vlog. I need to finish kids' ministry. Lot to do. And then when I get home, hopefully it's not too late of a night, because I'd like to get in the hot tub with you. <gasps> we haven't been in the hot tub no, in a minute. No, we haven't been in there since we got home from Kentucky, actually. That's right. It's just, we just haven't had time, and it's been rainy. But... I have some shopping to do that I'm not really happy about, but if I don't go do this shopping, oh, I know Caleb it is. may kill me. Our dishwasher conked out. Yeah. I, I'm, I actually turned into my parents yesterday with Caleb and Anthony and with you. Yeah. So when I was growing up, we had a dishwasher and we hardly ever used the dishwasher. We use our dishwasher all the time. When we did use the dishwasher, you got this big long lecture of, don't put this in it and that in it. And you have to clean the plate before you put it in the dishwasher. Did you get that one growing up? My mother never used a dishwasher. To this day, I have to force her to use a dishwasher even on like holidays where everybody's over. We finally helped her make the transition to paper plates or, you know, better plates. But she still likes forks and knives and all of the serving ware has to be real. I don't like plastic cutlery. Okay, well, neither does she. So Paper plates are fine. But she never wants to use a dishwasher. She washes everything by hand, and I feel like she spends way too much time, you know, right. having to stand there. So um, here's what I blame. I blame the dishwasher commercials where they would have this person with an entire cake on their plate. Right. And then they'd say, just put the whole cake inside of the dishwasher. Right, do you remember those commercials? So it was a case of... Yeah, I mean, only an old person that is like, you know, old timey saying clean the plates first and then use the dishwasher as like a secondary clean. Like that's the way they do it. Right. Now, what you need to do is just don't even do anything. Let the dishwasher do all of the work. But it's not. Right. It's not doing the work. It's not. It doesn't like particles on its dishes. So... I took apart the dishwasher going, maybe I could fix it because it was making these loud noises and I thought it was with the pump. And I started digging out and I was like, ugh, ugh. I mean, just gunk in the bottom and I found like chicken bones. And so, yeah, I found myself, I turned into my parents yesterday and I was telling everybody, if I decide to buy a new dishwasher... Nothing can go in there. Because <laughs> I was like, we're no more big bowls because what's happening is, is the bowls are stopping the top from getting clean. And then, and, and everything has to get pre-cleaned in the sink because yeah, I saw the price of dishwashers yesterday and I'm like, how are dishwashers now? 
the price of what we used to pay for the expensive refrigerator. Oh yeah. Right? Like you like it used to be a thousand dollars for a refrigerator. That was the top of the line. Now. I remember we bought our old refrigerator, it's on the patio. We paid like eight hundred bucks and we were like who side by side with ice in the side door that was the fancy refrigerator now, now they're like five grand i was gonna say now you can't buy even a uh, you know it's pretty soon a college refrigerator will be a thousand dollars like it's crazy the amount of money but it was funny so you have to go through that frustration like the 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 five steps of buying an appliance and the first step is always this anger that you have to purchase it because you're thinking back to a time when appliances would last like 20 years and now you get like five years maybe i think it's four years old okay so you're mad that you even have to purchase it so the very first thing that joe does is you know what we're gonna live amish and we're never having it i'm just not buying another one like i'm not doing it you know fold arms and you know as the spouse like you have to be like okay i'm gonna back you up because we've got to be a unified front right, right. like that's how we and i'm like there's no way you're going to be able to follow through with this. It's like such a huge inconvenience. I can follow through with this one. Not to have it. I can follow through with this one because I don't do the dishes. I was going to say, but <laughs> but there's times when you have to get stuff done quickly because we're going to do a recipe video or something and you're really glad that we have a dishwasher. So yeah. so then he breaks down and it's like, "Okay, but I'm not going to get a fancy one. I don't know when it's coming." So it was like it was watching you going through the stages of grief. And then over it's like, okay, buying an appliance. Now you gotta find one that's in stock because for some reason none of the stores are now they don't stock appliances anymore. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sorry, when your appliance breaks, most of the time that's when you need to buy a new one. Very few people, I think, just buy new appliances because, hey, I want to new buy a new appliance. Right. Maybe it's I'm doing a kitchen remodel and I'm gonna do all new appliances or I'm buying a new house and I'm buying new all appliance all new appliances. But I really believe that most people who go buy a new appliance it's because the old one crapped out. And then of course, what are the sales? You get 20% off if you buy four appliances. Well, I don't know. How wanna, many people do that? What kind of money do you have to d have? Right? Especially with $4,000 for a refrigerator and $2,000 for a stove and yeah. $800 for a dishwasher. So we, I checked, you know, the local thrift stores, the uh, Habitat for Humanity, and they're like, yeah, we're, we don't have any of that. Nope. And so I think we're going to have to go to the one place. The one store that I hate shopping at. That Brands Mart. Come on. I don't like Brands Mart. We don't like Brands Mart. But they're the only ones who have any in stock. Such bad experiences there. But like, here we go again. Right. So yeah, I got to go buy a new dishwasher so that my son still wants to hang out with me. Because that's who does the dishes. Yeah, it's Caleb's job. And uh, I'm, but it's yeah, I'm paying more money for a dishwasher than I paid for my first car. Let's think about that for a minute, right? A Seriously. refrigerator, the average refrigerator now costs more money than any of my kids' first cars. So you want to say, okay, you're really old, Joe. So your first car was less than a thousand dollars. But so is our children. But was our like children are in their twenties. Right. And. They all spent $3,000 or less on their first car. And I'm not even talking about for a bad car. They, you know, it, they car. didn't have 150, 250,000 miles on. They all had less than 75,000 miles it wasn't, on them. They weren't sporty necessarily. They were more no, like adult cars. No, but they were cars. good, functional, in great condition cars. And the average refrigerator now costs more money than what a teenager spends on their first car. Did you Let's ever think, think about that. that you, it's more likely you could save up and get yourself a refrigerator than like one day I'm going to save up and buy myself a car. Right. Like I feel like the car is, is the lofty goal and wish list, right? Yeah. One day I'm going to have a car of my own. Now it's one day I'm going to have a refrigerator of my own. Okay. I know I'm just getting frustrated. So I'm going to finish eating. I'm going to go edit the vlog. We will check in with you guys later on. Okay. I have to head to my game. It's going to take me about 35 minutes to get there. Anthony texted me. They have two minutes left in the second quarter, which means they have two minutes there, which is like five minutes, plus right. 10 minutes at halftime, plus about another 45 minutes. So I have about an hour before my game. It's going to take me 30 minutes to get there. So we're good. I got the video edited so, so you can preview it. All the kids' ministry is done. I have a job for you while I'm gone. Okay. I pulled these egg yolks out of the freezer. The chickens 
really enjoy egg yolks. They really do. And the baby, you know, with the rye neck, it's really good for them because it's got lots of vitamin E and selenium in there. So I'm going to give these to you, let these defrost. Okay. And then cook them on the electric blackstone. Which I have not used yet. It's very easy. Come on. The, the electric blackstone is so easy. Even, even Rachel, Rachel can, can use, use it. it. Yes. All right. Very, very easy. Real simple. Press the button in the middle. Okay. And then you're going to dial. That turns it on. Dial the temperature to where you want it. Again, they don't like them burnt on the bottom. They like them very soft, like These a low and slow. bougie chickens. So go to about 250 degrees. Press the button again. It'll warm up. It'll even tell you it's warmed up. And then after that, you're going to throw them on there. Cook them just like a scrambled egg. When like I'm done. Just kind of mix it up. And then when you're done... You press the button and hold it, and it'll turn off. Now, when it turns off, there's still a little orange light that stays lit up. Because it's like hot surface. Well, yeah, it just always stays lit up. So I unplug it because that's using electric that we don't need to use. Yeah. But it's not on. It's just there's always this, I guess it, we want to be pretty, have an orange light. Okay, so the eggs have thawed out, and it's finally stopped raining. So I'm going to go ahead and make these. Should be able to just push the button. Okay, I like that. Let's do it low and slow. Be like 270. All right. Let that warm up. We'll put those eggs right on it. So these guys are cooking up nice and fast. No sticking, which I'm pretty impressed with. So I'm actually gonna just turn it off all together and let it finish. So we've got some nice yummy eggs for the girls. I think they're gonna really love it and clean up honestly could not be simpler look at this all right pretty soon joe will be home and we will use this baby to cook some eggs of our own well that was a big waste of time drove all the way up there half hour lightning detector went off as soon as we got onto the field we waited about a half hour and then they said go home we're done for the day. Now I got to go back tomorrow. Good news is I get to go home. Rachel and I are going to eat and then we're going to go find a new dishwasher. I'm home. Hey, I'm premiering yesterday's vlog. Oh, yeah. So I got all the way up there, waited for 10 minutes. We got on the field, did the coin flip, and then the lightning detector went off. I'm sorry. So Anthony had the right idea when he took four, all the get other four something games. In. His whole thing was, well, I think it's going to rain. So at least I'll get something out of the day because we got sent home with no money. And now I have to go back tomorrow. That stinks. So here's my thought. Do you want to eat or I was going to go get the dishwasher, which I was going to do tomorrow. Right. Do you want to eat and then go with me to get a dishwasher? Or do you want to yes. go get the dishwasher first and then eat? Whichever you want. I can do either. Why don't you finish putting Keto on the couch and then let's run to the store while we have a lull in the rain because we're going to have to put it you in the back of the truck. Like. I'll bring a tarp, but you know what? I'm not really worried about it as much. And we'll eat when we get home. Sounds good. I've got three pieces left for you. Meat candy. There was, and that's it. There was a lot more than three pieces left in the refrigerator. There was I my whole them. two strips. I ate it though. You really are enjoying that pork belly. And this is it. And I saved it for you. I'll tell you what, you can have it. You enjoy it, baby. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Are you ready to go look for a dishwasher? Yes. Do you have a loan application? I know, right? <laughs> Remortgage the house to get an appliance? Yeah, like, wait, let's stop by, you know, the blood bank and see if I can, you know, donate an organ so we can get a dishwasher. So we did get lightning out, but while we were waiting for everything to like clear and for them to tell us we can go home, I had a really good conversation with one of my crew members who has been a friend of yours for a really long time. Yeah. And he was telling me his wife is having a lot of medical issues. She can't sleep at night. She feels really bloated. Uh, she's getting cramping and headaches. And he was like, I don't know what to do. And I know you guys have really improved your health. And we tried taking these keto pills, exogenous ketones. Right. And he was like, they're not helping. She's not losing any weight. They're expensive. And I said to him, well, here's the problem is those keto pills, exogenous ketones, um, they give you false promise. They're telling you you're going to be in ketosis, which they're technically not lying because you are in ketosis because ketosis is when your body's using ketones 
but you're not creating them, which means you're not actually losing weight because exogenous ketones will not help you lose weight. They'll give you a little bit of energy and a little bit of mental clarity, but they're not gonna help you lose weight and you don't need them to lose weight. Even Perfect Keto, who sells them, says that on their website. So anyway, when we get back from Vegas, he would like to sit down, him and his wife with us, and they're gonna try legitimate keto to help her reverse some of her medical issues. And I'm really, really excited about it. That is precious, precious news because we love them. Yep. And, and you never wanna force anything on anybody because I mean, we've known them. But he knew me when I weighed 300 pounds. Yeah. He knew you when you were like 270 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to think about like how many years I've known, I mean, 20, yeah. probably 20 years. And, and so so, he's seen you through it all. So, you know, this is one of those situations where they've seen you yo-yo diet for a really long time. And now that you've had the weight loss, it wasn't immediate that they come to you. It's, right. it's like after they've seen, okay, it's been a couple of years and they're still having success. Right. This isn't a yo-yo diet like in the past. So that, that is a precious answer to prayer because we love them. Yep. Um, I'm excited. And I told him, I want you, while in the meantime, while you're waiting for us to sit down, I want him to go watch all of our, like, how to get started on keto videos, the ones we've redone, like, with one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link for that playlist up here. But I said, go watch that. And he's like, well, where can I do in between? Like, until we can sit down, I'm like, here's what I want you to do. Stop eating sugar. Stop eating grains like bread and, you know, pasta and all that stuff. Don't worry about calories. Eat as much as you want. Just eat lots of meat. And the one question he goes, can I eat almonds and peanuts? I'm like, those are great keto foods. It's like, I would stay away from peanuts. Though peanuts are a little low in carbs. It's not like cashews or pistachios. They are heavily sprayed with chemicals. Right. Can cause inflammation that you're better off eating. Pecans, walnuts, macadamia nuts, if you can afford them. You know, almonds. Talk about taking down almonds one. can cause inflammation. In some people, you have to know, but it's much better than peanuts. Well, and it's important for us to take a look at different specific ingredients because right. you don't want the keto lifestyle to be blamed for not feeling good because it's really an ingredient. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you're eating a bunch of peanuts and you're getting inflammation and you're getting a headache, you know, because what it's sprayed with, right? you don't want to be like, well, I got to throw out the whole keto diet because it must be that I have a aversion to keto. Right. It's like, no, it's these individual ingredients that, that may cause a problem for you. And that's why we scrutinize ingredients. Let's go. Wow. What did you do with all the stuff? Um, it is strategically put away in the closet. Not terrible. Not like it's like if you open that, you're going to be killed. But yeah, I had to put some stuff away. We are not done with the front room quite yet. And it's I, too busy. Can't, I can't wait. I need my she shed back. Well, you know what this means? I can go buy more stuff to store. No. In yes. No. Yes. We got plenty. I can order a whole bunch more of the insulated water bottles and we can stack them up in here. Hey, what are you eating? Well... Somebody ate all the pork belly. Who did that? I don't know. We're gonna hunt them down. I, I don't. I'm gonna definitely hunt them down because they ate my pork belly. I literally had one meal of that pork belly, and somebody ate all the rest of it. I am on the case. Don't you worry. Thank they, you very much. They're not getting away with Punish this. Punish whoever did it. Done. So uh, I had. I forgot we had it in the freezer because we bought these before we went to uh, Keto Palooza. We did the review video on them. These are the Four River sausages. Oh, those are so good. And we had bought them, but the you know freeze by or sell by date was coming up. And so I had put them in the freezer. And when I was looking for steaks and stuff, I found them. So I'm having one of those. If you didn't see that video, these are so good and very clean. I'll leave a link for it up here. They're just really good. And look at that. Look at all, oh, look at all that. So as we're going to Brands Mart and I make a comment how much I don't want to go to Brands Mart. I remember what's near Brands Mart. She wants to go to Cracker Barrel. Now we can't eat anything in Cracker Barrel and you can't even eat, you can't even buy 50% of what's in the store because it's all food that we can't they eat. They have cutesy stuff though. So we're going to go there first to take our mind off of going to Brands Mart. Oh my gosh, when I was a kid, this was my favorite thing in car rides. We always had Mad Libs. Okay, we are now boycotting Cracker Barrel. Why? It's the first week of October. But We're I... not even at Halloween, and 
50% or more of the store right now is Christmas. I love it. I thought you liked Thanksgiving. Let's put the Christmas tree up right now. We spent a lot of time in this section when the kids were little. The 1980s design. What? It was Florida in a nutshell. Because over here you have like these sweet little baby ducklings. Do you see them? Right. Are they so cute? Yeah. If we just walk a little bit, you're going to see there's some giant lizards. I don't see no lizards. Just, You're imagining things. Keep panning it. I'm telling you. Usually there's lots of iguanas by the yeah, water, that's though. That's what I'm saying. It was a big old iguana. There's one. There you go. That area. They're fast and they swim. Do you feel like you're going to the guillotine? I do not know how to, like, haggle with these people. Because it's like one of the last stores on earth where you can actually haggle the price of an electronics. And I never know how low to go. $4, $80, $1 million, $70. Did we say how much we hate this store? <laughs> so they tried to play games with us. Uh, First of all, the price that they told me is not what they have selling everywhere. It was cheaper, that's a good thing. But when we found it on the internet, there was a sign saying, free year warranty. We're like, perfect. The free year warranty wasn't actually a free year warranty. It was 50% off when you buy an extended warranty but that's not what the website said the website said one extra free year warranty when you buy this it's not there anymore so then the guy goes no no no. now we have 50 percent off of when you buy an extended warranty i'm like okay i don't normally buy extended warranties but it was a really good price for four years it was like 50 bucks and that's going to cover four years on a thousand dollar appliance so it's worth it he goes, oh, no, that expired yesterday. I'm like, the sign's right there. He's like, yeah, no, no. I'm like, you have to honor the sign. It's right there. So we had to go through all this rigmarole. Meanwhile, I am just touring all of you're, the furniture. You're walking away because you want nothing to do with I me want haggling. to do with the haggling. It felt like we were on the set of 40-Year-Old Virgin. It's like the last like open air electronic store yeah. where you're getting kind of pressure from salespeople still. Right. I was uh, thinking like, you know, Michael McDonald would be playing like Yamo B there. You couldn't even find a sale. It took me 30 minutes to find a salesperson. Dude, let's eat. What? I can't wait any longer. <laughs> it's like almost nine o'clock. Okay, we'll eat. You didn't say anything about your hat. Oh, my $1.99 hat. This isn't this. I love. I like any of these. I love hats. First of all, I especially like them when they have this kind of a back instead of the snapback. I like the map inside the bill. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. But also like you know freedom. I love the American flag hat. But this is a really nice hat. It's well made. We were in Cracker Barrel. I got nothing. We got a hat. They were forty percent off of men's hats. So twenty dollars down to eleven ninety nine. So my American Express card, we have the Delta American Express card, and I try to use that and then pay it off like as soon as it hits, like the next day. But I'm trying to get points for Delta Airlines to help cover like flights going to all the conferences and stuff. So I just thought used it and I forgot they have this benefit on there that once a month, you can, if you spend $10 or more in an eating establishment, you get $10 back. I bought the hat and then I got an email that said, thanks for spending $10 at Cracker Barrel. You get $10 back. So this hat cost me $1.99. I love that because they're not differentiating between food and no, it's, merchandise. No, it's an eating establishment. You know I already salted the food. It's an insult to the cook when you add salt I'm without tasting sorry. it. I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult you, but I really like salt on my bread and butter. Okay. Well, we finally got to the eating part. We got to the eating part. We got the dishwasher out of the truck. I'm gonna put that in later on. Dishwashers are super easy to install. I'm yeah. glad we got it. I don't like where we got it from, but we got it. We got it. Here's what we're eating. We've got three eggs. And then we've got a bunch of the roast beef with a little bit of our butter mayonnaise on mm. top. Add a little bit of fat to that roast beef. Rachel's having one of those sausages I had earlier. I may or may not have one later. We have two slices of the Maria Emmerich bread, but really it's one slice because we make half loaves. I feel like I'm getting more when I have two, two. instead of one. Me too. And then we have butter that's been sitting on the counter for two days. But it, look at how spreadable it is. 
super, super spreadable. I found the best way to clean the Blackstone Electric Riddle after you make eggs. Huh. Well, what are we cooking the eggs in? Because it gives more flavor. Salt and butter, right? Mm -hmm. So you take the eggs out and then you got to take a paper towel and wipe down the butter that's pulled up in there. But remember, that's super clean because it's like a ceramic surface. Are you using the I bread? I took the bread and I wiped all the butter off of the griddle. Mm. So you got all that melted butter that has the salt from the eggs and instead of pushing it down into the grease trap. Don't lose that. Suck it right up onto the bread. <laughs> so good. So we had a great day. We actually got a microwave too. We did. We have a microwave. Our microwave. It's been just ready to conk the out. The door is broken and then every once in a while the controls fry out. And you have to like unplug it and then plug it back in. And I really wanted to get the same microwave because I won't have to re-drill new holes. Because if I got the same microwave, all the holes line up, pull down the old one, put in the new one. But this is the second time we've had a problem with this one. We had them come out and fix it twice because the controls go bad. I think, even though they say it's protected, I think what happens is, is you get the steam from cooking on the stove, oh, which I know we don't do. even do that much of. Yeah. And it gets up into the controls and it fries them out. I think so, so too. So we got a different microwave where the controls are off on the side, like not over the big giant thing where you would normally be boiling water. Yeah. So I'll put that in eventually. But we got a really good deal and again, didn't really want to shop there and I would have gone to Lowe's where we normally go, but I looked up and the microwave that we got was $200 more in every other store. So you just kind of have to suck it up. Yeah, I suck it up and uh, we'll put that in eventually, but we, we need the dishwasher. We absolutely need the dishwasher. Overall though, I mean, it, it was a bummer that my games got lightninged out, but at least I got done tonight what I was going to get done tomorrow right. afternoon. Like just going get it out and of the way. So at least that's out of the way. It's a little bit of a late night. But we're still eating earlier than had my games because it had my games happen. Yeah. We weren't gonna eat till nine thirty or ten o'clock anyway. Right. And it's eight fifty. So we get to eat. We're gonna go watch a movie, I think. We're gonna try. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to accomplish it. We're not going to fall asleep like within five minutes of the opening credits. No, we're going to, we're going to stay up. How are you feeling? I feel amazing. Okay. What do you think the scale says? I can't worry about it. Thank you. I was waiting. For, I, just, I, I was hoping you were going to say, I, I don't care what it says. I just can't worry about it because I feel good in my clothes. My nose hairs are bothering me. I tried on some jeans to start packing for Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I got rid of three pairs of jeans that are way too big now. Yep. And I'm, I, I don't want to go back. I don't want to let them stay in the closet. They got to go. Right. I mean, this is the advantage to buying the majority of your clothes at a thrift store because I've only got a 2 or $3 investment in each article of clothing. Mm -hmm. So when it doesn't fit anymore, you move on. Right. Some of the clothes that I'm taking, I never would have taken with us because they were all fitting too tightly. And now they fit great. Mm -hmm. So stuff is happening. So even if it's not reflecting it on the scale, and we experienced this before earlier in our keto journey where I went down like four sizes right. and lost all of two pounds. Right. So it, there's every possibility. That's why the scale doesn't matter. I know it's hard, yeah. right? To not get on that scale or to not worry about what that scale says, it's hard. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to be slaves to that scale. I mean, that scale does not hold your worth. You know, you are not what that scale says. Yeah. And the problem is, is when we get on that scale, we use that to determine what our worth is. We use it to determine, are we gonna have a good day or are we gonna have a bad day? And the problem is, if that number is not a number you want, but everything else, we say this all the time, but everything else is great. Like your clothes are fitting better. You can move better. You feel better. You're off of medications. None of that matters when that number isn't a number that you want, right? Yeah, I mean, it's very frustrating, but ultimately we are looking for body recomposition. Right. I want to look different in what I am wearing. I want to look slimmer in certain areas, you know, curvy where I want to be curvy and not curvy where I don't want to be curvy. Right. So if that is happening, if I do look different in my clothes, is it okay if the scale number doesn't right. move? Because and that's a hard thing for you. It's a hugely hard thing for me, but I'm thinking, I'm equating that if the scale number is down, then I look different 
in my clothing. Right. But that's not always the case. Well, I can tell you this. You know how I know that that's true? Because at my heaviest known number mm. on that scale, like when I was younger, like when I, like years ago, like 25 years ago, I remember being 260 pounds, mm -hmm. but I was still in a 38. Right. And then at my highest known number after that, well, actually when I was about 265 pounds, right. I was in a 44. So how is it that I was at one point 260 pounds and in a 38 and I wasn't super muscular? Yeah. And then 10 years later, I was that same weight, but I was in a size 44. Why? Because I was gaining fat. So that number doesn't mean anything because it's reflecting fat and it's refle reflecting water and it's reflecting muscle. Yeah. And so we need to not focus on that and focus on like everything else. How do we feel? How are our clothes fitting? And then like I said yesterday, we were talking about like, I'm getting flatter here. My belly isn't hard anymore. It was right. hard, like a distended kind of thing. And now I got the floppiness. I can like play with my skin. And but I mean, that's not a great thing, but it's better than being a hard extended stomach. Yeah, because it's not full of the fat anymore. Right. And I like what you're saying because I have been 160 pounds 15 times across my life. Right. Because I've been yo-yo dieting. And I bet you all 15 times you were a different, different size. I look different every single time. Think about that. If you've ever, you know, gotten into Wonderland, like you're over 200 pounds, mm -hmm. you've gotten into Wonderland before, every single time, 199, 198, it looks different every single time. It depends right. on your age. It depends on, you know, what you're eating. It depends on the time of day. It depends on the time of day. Yeah, because, I mean, I have been at this weight that I am now, like or when we started this, this challenge, when I was eating nothing but oatmeal but it did not look good at all. It right. was green skin and it was no hair and it was like the skin that I had had no elasticity to it at all. It was super wrinkly. So it's like, yeah, I mean, that number, you may hit that number multiple times across your life and you may be thinking, hey, I remember when I was 20 years old and was in this range, I looked a certain way even if we get down to that number, you're not guaranteed to look exactly the same. You know, body recomposition requires a whole bunch of different things, not just the number. Yeah. So I just realized something. Yeah. We came home. Uh huh. We bought a stainless steel dishwasher. Mm hmm. This is the first time in the history of our marriage. Everything matches. All of our appliances are going to actually match. High five. We've never had that because we always buy appliances on. What's available, yes. what's on sale. They've never matched. And if there's a scratch and dent, like we would go into Best Buy and buy floor models. So it's it was always wow. take what you get. So Look at us. one point we had a black refrigerator, a white stove, yeah. a stainless steel dishwasher. Then we had the black and then we had the gray over there. Now everything is actually for we the first time. We didn't plan it. We just back. It just, it, we backed into that. Well, the funny part was we bought a Samsung dishwasher and the cheapest is stainless. The stainless steel used to be the most expensive. Mm -hmm. Now the stainless steel was the cheapest because they have stainless steel bronze and stainless steel black and stainless right. steel blue. People, Those are the expensive ones. Right. And the plain stainless steel, the plain stainless steel was actually cheaper than white which made no sense to me. That's no. why we bought this one. We bought the one that had the best deals with really good ratings and that's going to last. And also a quiet one so that if you happen to run it, we can still do a video. Right. Because they had cheaper ones, but it was like... Yeah. Yeah, terrible. So I think that's going to be the end of today's vlog. Tomorrow... Um, I don't even get to go to church with you because I'm going to have to go do the games. You're going to do that. Um... May do steaks for dinner tomorrow. <gasps> that doesn't make me upset. Put some salt on them and let them sit in the fridge. I'll do steaks when I get home. Okay. I should be home around four o'clock. Um, so I got three games. It should be about six hours. 
and then we'll see how the day goes. Okay. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.